Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is entitled Aligner Biomechanics, The Hidden Truths. This was a lecture by Mada Upadhyaya. Just a quick reminder, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and may not be 100% accurate to the lecture. However, we try our best to ensure it is. It is independent work of myself and the Orthodontics in Summary team. So Mada's lecture was a fantastic lecture on aligners. He started off by describing the two conflicts as to how we understand aligner movement, then spoke about individual malocclusions and how aligners work well due to the biomechanics or how they don't work well. And he concluded with the best bit, which were his clinical tips, applying not only the material science, the evidence base, but also the theory behind it. A wonderful lecture to be a part of. It is recorded on YouTube and you can access it from the link. So we started off by describing the two different understandings as to how aligners deliver their force. The first is that of shape molding effect, or the shape driven idea as it's otherwise known. The idea that the aligner holds on to the entirety of the tooth. The aligner has been planned to move the tooth and therefore by holding on to most of the surface of the teeth, the tooth experiences a force on most surfaces. The second is to do with attachment driven processes. The idea that the perpendicular surface with Invisalign is where the force is being delivered. Now, in Mada's opinion, 80% of the forces delivered from aligners come through the shape molding effect and 20% come from the attachment of the, on the teeth. He went on to describe the different malocclusions and how the biomechanics affect the pr process of tooth movement. So starting off with deep bites, well, how do aligners work for deep bite and intrusive forces specifically? We well, describe the watermelon seed effect, the idea that the aligner is holding onto the entirety of the tooth, it squeezes it, and consequently we get an axial force taking place through the center of resistance of the tooth. Uh, moving on, when it comes to looking at anterior open bites, why are aligners advantageous for the management of their cases? Well, there are two main mechanisms for it. The first is the drawbridge effect. This is the idea of relative extrusion taking place through the retroclination of the dentition. Now, in a paper that Maddo was involved with, which is a landmark paper published by Harris in 2020, it showed that 60% of anterior open bite resolution takes place through this drawbridge effect. The second main reason was through the lever principle. The idea that we get some intrusion taking place posteriorly has a greater effect anteriorly. That, that is in the order of around 30%. And this is also from the same paper by Harris in 2020. Next, he moved on to describing space closure and how it is a problem with aligners. Commonly, when we're closing spaces, lateral open bites tend to emerge in the posterior regions. Why is this the case? Well, he broke it down very nicely in describing the equal moments taking place dividing up the anterior segment and the posterior segment. And in these two segments, so what's taking place? In the anterior segment, we have a clockwise rotation occurring. And in the posterior segment, there's a counterclockwise rotation. Putting these together, we get the bowing effect occurring. And this is partly due to the lack of rigidity of the aligner material. We tend to see this less commonly in fixed appliances due to having a rigid arch wire. He then went on to look at different tooth movements with aligners. Now I'll cut to the chase. The most interesting bit for this for me was looking at root movement, which he stated has not been observed through the evidence-based process, which is really interesting. He then quoted the most recent extraction aligner studies. One was by Dai in 2019, essentially showing that when it comes to aligner treatment and extractions, we tend to get a lot of molar tipping taking place, more anchorage loss posteriorly, Anteriorly, we get greater retroclination of the incisors, but most crucially, there's no observation of any root movement to the anterior teeth. It appears to be uncontrolled tipping. When it comes to looking at root movements from Zhang's study in 2015, it concluded that root movement cannot be assured through aligner treatment. It's mostly a tilting motion which occurs. So what are the challenges? Why can't aligners move teeth as if efficiently as braces? Well, it comes back down to the first principles. There's an interplay of dumping followed by a counterplay of a moment, which achieves uprighting in fixed appliances. Fixed appliances achieve this quite easily through the interaction of the arch wire and the bracket slot and the material, those three key components. 
when it comes to aligners, they can't change their material or their material properties. So they are restricted with a material which doesn't have as much force it can impart. He then looked at the material factors and then specified that when, it look, when we look at aligners themselves, they have a number of issues when it comes to maintaining a, a continuous force, which fixed appliances, specifically in light eye wires, don't have. Stress relaxation is the main one, where there's 80% of the force lost after 100 minutes. That was Fang's paper from 2019. He mentioned how the modulus of elasticity is exceptionally low when it comes to aligners. He gave a comparison, nickel titanium, 45 uh, GPA. When it came to aligners, it was 1 to 2 GPAs. That was Coder's paper from 2013. He mentioned also it's a viscoelastic material. It, it essentially has an advantage at absorbing forces rather than dispensing forces, which is why it's ideal when it comes to aligners. It almost acts as a dampener to delivering forces. Now, this lecture was great, but the best bit now was the tips that Amada gave. So, although it sounds relatively negative about how aligners work, he does use them clinically. So he's used this information and applied it to get the results that he wants. So, Madda's tips. The first is to order as many trays as possible. And what he likes is for his patients to change their aligners so they're using two to three trays per week. And this counters that forced relaxation. We know it's going to occur, but by having new aligners, it means that you're getting a higher overall force. But of course, he accounts for this in the activation and reduces the activation per aligner. He tells patients that having, he tells patients to reduce taking the liner in and out as much as possible, as we know that the insertion and removal also reduces the forces on the aligner. That was a paper by Skake in 2019. He also described another tip when we are able to change the thickness of the aligner. Well, the thicker the aligner, the greater force delivery that we get. And as a consequence, when it comes to root movement or space closure, it's better to use a thicker aligner. If we're, able to made, if we're able to change it. That was Madder's lecture, and he concluded with stating that biomechanics is the law. Everything else is just a recommendation, which I think is a wonderful way to end a lecture. Madder's lecture is fully available on YouTube. He's very kindly uploaded it, and I do recommend anybody with an interest in liners listening to his lecture, and I took very much from it. As always, please do subscribe, and look forward to the next episode.